This is Ken here at MrTruck.com. And for this video series, I'm partnering with TransWest Truck Trailer RV north of Denver. And what we're trying to do is cover trailering tips. We know how dangerous trailers can be or how intimidating they can be. So we want to give you some advice and tips, some special uh, features that may make it easier for you to get used to it and do all the fun stuff. It's Kent with MrTruck.com. We partnered up with TransWest Truck Trailer RV north of Denver to bring you trailering tips. It's all about, you know, the tow rig, the trailer, and what you need to make it all work well so you're not nervous about it and you're safe. So today I've got CJ. How are you, Kent? Good. <laughs> he works here at, at uh, TransWest here in the horse trader department. And we're going to hook up this bumper pull first and show you a few things about that. Now, how do you, when you do tell people how to back up to a trailer, do you have like, uh, some good tips? Yeah, I mean, on a lot of these newer trucks, a lot of them have cameras. So we're yeah. kind of, with what I grew up with and what you grew up with is totally different from what, you know, we're seeing on some of these trucks with, you know, cameras actually in the tailgate or even now above the cab looking down at the gooseneck ball. Um, one of the very first things I always, uh, you know, recommend to customers is, is Try to pull forward as far as you can to get you a good straight shot at it. Um, yeah. You know, you know, sitting square in the seat, not moving a whole lot, looking down your mirrors. If the trailer kind of looks even on each side, more than likely you're pretty dang close to middle. Uh, but by starting out at a good square spot to the, the trailer itself is always a good starting point, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's, that's how I've always done it over the years, you know. So I'm getting used to the newfangled uh, devices they have, like in my trucker, we're going to show that couple of different brands have a little knob you turn and it turns the opposite way I'm used to turning so it's different but I understand it and we're going to go through that and explain that. Well let's hook this up and then we'll talk more about chains and all these other things that we need to do. Sounds good. Okay. Okay perfect perfect right there. Well now we're back where I've got to do is drop the hitch on and we're ready to go after we plug everything in. So what was you saying about that? This one does have a camera, and I was trying to give you instructions, but... Yeah, so we were, we were discussing that. Again, we're more traditional. I was looking in my, my mirror watching you direct me. To where a lot of times what we see when customers come in is sometimes we're directing them, but they're looking at their camera in the cab. Well, if you're standing over there and giving them directions, they're not even looking at you. So you kind of need to know where that driver's at and what they're looking at. Because if they're looking at the camera, well, we need to be directing right here yeah. above the hitch. Yeah, and that's always kind of kind of hard to figure out where in that camera view you are. Absolutely. So we got, yeah. And so people are, are used to using the spotters, but you know, in most cases with a good camera, you're better off to just do it yourself. But yeah. you know, and, and it's, and that's, that's an old traditional thing too. So to hook this up, all we got to do is drop the jack onto the coupler, and then we make sure that latched, and this does have a, a a safety pin, which I like for yes, making sir. sure that that bully dog is latched. So go ahead and latch it up, and yeah. we'll show all your skills here. So what's the pink ribbon for? So the, <laughs> the pink ribbon here just means that this trailer has been completely through our service department. Even though it's a brand new trailer, you know we go ahead and PDI these trailers as they come in. Um, just you know, on this one here, we're not doing alignment because it's that big, but we will put it on a biz machine. The technicians go through the whole trailer. We, we spend two and a half hours of the technician going through it. And then this means it's been completely through the shop and it's oh, good yeah. to go for the customer. Well, that's awesome. It's good to have a, have a plan. Okay, that's good. Now, the, um, all these newer trailers have a seven RV plug. Correct. So we're not into six plugs anymore, but yeah. And that's a good idea. You run the jack all the way up and I'll talk about that with the chains in a little bit here. And but, with that, you know, this one has a foot. So we always have to keep an eye on it. You know, this one here, this jack gets up high enough, I'd be comfortable with sending them down the road with the jack, you know, where it's at in, in a running, you know, position going down the road. Now, if it were to hang lower or it was a wheel that it hangs lower, then I might be removing that throat and the tack because I just don't want it hanging too low. Well, sure, and that's an important issue when it comes to safety chains and what's going to happen. But yeah, go ahead and, fit and yep. hook the coupler up. There's a couple different ways. I do the old traditional, I just kick it with my foot. Oh, the Karate Kid. Yeah. Here. And then you just put your pin completely through there. And then that way it can't come up. Cool. And then the plug, the plug's pretty simple, pretty standard. 
how all these work. You just want to make sure they've got a clip. They got a clip, and that's kind of what holds it in. And then, I'll be darned, this is kind of weird. The door's upside down. Some of these are right side up or upside up, or down, it's upside down. And there's that part that you're going to contact, which means you've got to turn the plug over to make sure that that little ear hits the clip in the door. So there it is all. That's the way to plug it in. I like them better when the door is on top because I think that, that little net niche on top yeah. holds it in better. This allows it to move down and Ford was doing that. They go back and forth. I didn't know GMC was doing this. But anyway, that's that part of it. And on that, you know, typically what we see Kent too is I can usually tell when a customer comes to pick up a trailer if they live on a dirt road or not. <laughs> when I open, especially on the bumper pulls um, or where the, the actual plug is on the bumper itself, I can open up that door and if it's really dusty, we might have a contact issue. So we might have to clean that plug. You know, we're not getting the contact we need right. to run you know, brake lights or turn signals or running lights. So um, we usually like to assess that. Usually you can just spray something on there, plug it in a couple times and it'll clean it, get that connection we need. We see it most times on the bumpers, uh, plugs rather than the in beds, but I yeah. can usually tell if you live on a dirt road. Yeah, I've got a mile of dirt road. Yep. It's amazing how dirty that gets, yes. but do you use that dialectic grease on any of these yeah, after you, you clean them? Or? Yeah, you don't want to use, I mean, I've heard of some people use WD-40. The problem is if you overdo those type of products, it will eventually collect dust as well. It'll yeah. kind of get a little bit more gummy. So yeah. those type of cleaners you need to kind of look at. It doesn't take much. It's just yeah. a little bit of spray and then plugging it in and out a couple times. We'll clean it and then we can get our contact we need. Well, that's true. And then it's always important to check the lights and we'll do that to check yeah. and make sure they all work. And then let's see, we got the breakaway. Oh geez, yeah, there's your, you got everything tied up on this because it's being ready to sell. But, uh, and then, and do you, you cross the chains? If I have enough chain link, absolutely. Yeah. I will always try to cross them if I have the link. Now, yeah. if I don't, then we need to just go straight into the truck from that standpoint. Yeah, yeah, and this has got the cable for the breakaway, and usually you loop that either over the chain or over the, the other part. Well, let's see if there's enough room. I know General Motors are not hard to hook up, if I can even see them. And see that hitch hanging down, Yeah, that's not this, the best way. Yeah, that's a seven inch drop there on that hitch. So I wouldn't be very comfortable with that. Um, just the potential of turning. And as you turn the truck and trailer going different directions, which is gonna stretch that chain. And that has the potential of getting kind of tied up in there. And that's not right. what you want. And on this hitch, because it looks like it's a straight in there, you could just flip it upside down. Correct. And you, as long as it doesn't hit the tailgate. That's what I do too. Well, the reason I wanna show at least the chains cross at the beginning and that's that's a problem too is we all need longer chains now for a lot of reasons for length of hitches and it's a common thing but and you've got the, you know the breakaway cable you always want to hook up and then you guys have those really cool ones that are the red expandable cables yeah and our Cimarron trailers they come with that that, what's it that called? red cable that <laughs> will expand and contract on it's kind of almost yeah. like a slinky is what yeah it is. yeah it's great well, the reason I want to talk about the chains being crossed is, and this can happen to you, I hauled a trailer out of Kansas once in a rainstorm, and I was sure that I had a couple that were latched, but something happened, it popped up, and I looked in my mirrors, and the trailer was kind of swinging all over. So I thought, oh, I know something's wrong. So I hit the brake controller by itself, not the foot brake, but just the brake controller. And that brought the trailer in line so I could control it, not hit the tailgate. And then I pulled over using that brake controller, uh, on, the, on the below the dash and looked back there and that's all it was is something came unhooked but because I crossed the chains and I had the jack all the way up if I would have had the jack down part way would have broke the jack yeah. and I wouldn't have been able to connect again so the trailer fell into the chain the, the the cross chain and I was able to get the jack down jack it back up hook it all up and go with no damage but that's why you want to cross the chains, and that's why and, you know, people, some people, especially on goosenecks, don't think safety chains are necessary. That's your line of defense, you know. If you come, something comes unhooked, gooseneck, whatever it is, the, ch the chains will grab you and hold you so you can get under control. And if they break, and then that's when the breakaway comes in and locks the brake up on a trailer for I don't know how long it is, if it's a minute or, it's not very long. Just enough time so you can run out and get that rock, put it behind the tire, because yeah. you're probably out in traffic somewhere. But uh, yeah, this is good. This is a good way to do it. I like the way we did this. So should we check the, the trailer lights now? Yeah. Okay, I'll go down the back.
Running lights. There you go, you can see all the lights. Okay, left blinker. You can see the left blinker. Right blinker. Brakes. Cool, they all work. That's what you want to do every time you use the trader is check the lights. And you can also check the brakes by pulling, since you're unhooked, you could pull ahead and try the brake controller um, just for the trader brakes. Okay, CJ is going to hit the brake controller independent of his truck. So that way we'll test the brakes on the trailer. Okay, CJ. Now, we didn't lock them up, but you can see that the trailer brakes are working. You can hear them, and you can see that the tires rotate and they don't keep rolling. So there's resistance there. Okay, here's the brake controller. On this particular year, GMC, they're on the left side. They've now moved them to the right side where I've complained about for a couple decades. But anyway, people get used to wearing that. This is one you can see real easily. And you got the manual control on top. Then you got the gain setting, plus and minus on the bottom. So that's all you do. And you need to know that in the emergency. If you're going around a curve in the mountains and snow and ice, a lot of times I just use that trailer brake controller. And that controls it, that straightens out the snake. And if you get on the freeway, somebody crowds you and your trailer starts swaying, you grab the brake control. You don't touch your foot brake because you want to, to, make, to straighten it out. And that works, that'll save your life. But on this, this brand new trailer, so the brakes aren't burnished. Now, we'll talk about burnishing the brakes because when they come new, you know, disc brakes don't need anything. They'll grab all the time right off the bat. When you're talking about drum electric brakes, they don't quite fit the round part of the shoe, of the actual drum. The shoes don't fit the drum. So you've got to break them enough so that that round part matches. Then you have super brakes, the kind you want. So when you start off to burnish them, now you were, you were telling me how do you tell customers to burnish the brakes? We'll always check to make sure brakes are engaging before they leave here. And obviously we try to you know set the gain as to where we can feel the brake grab, but it's not a real harsh throwing you or your animals into the wall or something like that. Um, then at that point, we know that on these newer trailers, as they use the brakes and they warm up, like you're saying, you know, they're going to start grabbing the seating a little bit more. So then they might have to adjust their brake controller based on that. Now, obviously, when they leave here, they're usually empty. So we don't have four or five head of horses on there with all their tack. All right. So then when we throw all that in the mix, the weight's gone up. So maybe then they're going to have to adjust you know, the brakes again at that point. Yeah, now there is a special way of doing it. I forgot the numbers, but there's a way of doing it so many seconds, so many minutes and release and all that. But the way I do it is when it's a brand new trailer, I turn the gain way up and that gives me more brake pressure and I will run it that way for a few different trips. And then after I've done that and I can tell the brakes are getting, you know, tighter and tighter, then I back the gain back down. I mean, I might start off at a 10 or an eight and then I'll end up basically being a five or a six gain. So what, what gain do you usually use on a trade? I guess there's a difference between one that's new and one that's used. Correct, yeah. You know, for the most part, my personal truck, I mean, between my demo trailer, or if I'm running and grabbing something or hauling it to a customer, I'm usually running between about that six, six and a half. And again, I'm usually empty. At yeah, that point. yeah. And there's a difference between empty and loaded. On some of my trailers, and an OEM, I use some other brake controllers that work to adjust itself. But a lot of times you'll have to back the gain off a little bit on the empty trailer so you don't lock the brakes up and leave a bald spot yeah. on your tire. But yeah, well, that's cool. Well, now let's talk about this trailer you're towing around here. Yeah. In Bullseye? Yeah, this is a newer model that Logan's come out with the last couple of years, and it has really been popular. Uh, it's a really good price point. It's a well-equipped trailer. Um, it kind of fits that kind of nice middle of the road. Um, maybe you don't want to jump into the high-end Cimarron trailer that we offer as well. But this is a really hot seller in a gooseneck and a bumper pull. We sell a bunch of them. Cool, and these are still the galvanized frame and some aluminum, some steel siding? Yeah, the galvanized steel frame with aluminum body. Uh, so we're gaining that strength of that steel frame, but we don't have the rust issues that we would if it was black steel. Uh, and then the aluminum gives it a nice sleek finished look, and then it also lightens up the trailer a little bit. Oh sure, well, those look like new drop downs. I haven't seen those in a while, those are pretty cool. Yeah, on the bullseyes, you get heavy duty drop down windows rather than a prefab window. And then also on your tack door, same thing, heavy duty made at the factory. Well, that's good. So they they keep improving. Yeah. That's a pretty nice drop down. And then you got that, I like that Logan Coach netting there to keep the flies out. That's right. So that is so cool. But yeah, two axles. 
made for two horses and then is attack at the back or the front? It's a front tack room. Uh, in this model, you can do in the bumper pulls, you can do a two or three horse. You can do a stock option as well. And they've just come out with an extra tall two horse straight load option. Uh, and then in the goosenecks, we can do that combo version, three or four horse, and then again, a two horse straight load in it. Okay. Well, let's tell people how they can contact you so they can call you, email you, whatever they need to do to find out more about you know what you have. Absolutely. If you want to look at our inventory, you can go to transwest.com and then just click horse trailer inventory. If you want to give us a call, anybody on the sales team can help you out. That number is 303-684-3400. Cool. They got a great website. Well, now let's go play with the gooseneck. Yep. <laughs> okay. About a foot. Whoa, perfect. Okay, now if you look at these ribs on this truck, and I can actually put a piece of tape. Can you see that in the tailgate from you where you're sitting? If I lean over and look out the back window, yeah, that's usually what I try to always reference is that middle rib and right. the actual couple and try okay. to make sure they're lined up. Okay, that's, that's good, because I was going to put a piece of tape back here if it makes a difference. If it doesn't, you know, it probably won't make a difference. Yeah. It's not going to stick to this anyway, so. Yeah. Okay, so when CJ's lining this up, if you notice, there's these ribs in here, and one of them usually lines right up with the ball. So that rib there, if you're lining it up, and of course he used his mirrors, outside mirrors, to make sure it's kind of equal side differences on each side of the trailer, which is good, and then you watch that rib, and then I helped stop him. I'm also going to show you another tool we're going to put in here to show you when to stop backing up when you're over the ball. The whole idea is when that bungee moves, and you can use other things, but that will tell you when you're right over the ball, because that's the hardest part to do. You usually go back and forth a few times over the ball. Yeah, we're ready. We grew up in the in the new modern era, and I love cameras, but cameras put a lot of companies out of business that made all these gadgets. Yes. So here we are with cameras. So does this have a camera for the gooseneck? This one does not. Does it's not. only got it on the tailgate here. Okay. Well, that's that's the coolest stuff that they have. I mean, the GM is like, I call them the king of cameras. They have like 100 cameras. They got them in the mirror to where you can back up and it'll show up on your screen what the camera underneath the mirror shows, and you can see for yards. Yes. It's so neat. I mean, safety has really improved on these traders from my day, but what other, what other things you want to tell us about this before you start hooking up chains? Yeah, a couple of things that, I, I mean, I always like on, with this being a long box, I mean, I run a short box pickup, but I also run it with a toolbox on top, so I can't see that magic middle rib on mine. Yeah. But if you can, that's a great starting point because we know that we're lined up with the, the trailer. Again, having a good straight shot at it, it's one of the best things you can do. If you have a spotter, the most important thing is you gotta be able to see the spotter. Spotter's gotta be able to see you in the mirror. Yes. And then again, knowing your hand signals, right, left. And then as you're approaching that ball, I mean, you, I saw you doing it. That's exactly how I grew up doing it is this is how far you are to the ball. And as we get there, that's where we need to stop. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the biggest things is, is also taking your time and going slow. Yeah. I never want to see anybody really, you know, in a rush and really getting that truck back there in a hurry. It's really, <coughs> really taking your time. Um, there's also a couple of little tricks that I've seen. I've seen a pool noodle. I've seen somebody actually <laughs> cut a pool noodle <laughs> and stick it on the ball. Yeah. And as yeah. you get over it, it'll fold that pool noodle over. Oh, yeah. That's and then you cool. grab the pool noodle and pop it off the ball. Um, on my personal truck, I actually have extended my middle headrest in the back and I can see the bars. Oh. Now, there is a trick to it. You have to be sitting square in your seat. Again, not moving a lot. If you're leaned over one way or the other, it's gonna throw you off. But if you sit square in your seat and you're looking in your rear view mirror, I try to line the coupler of the gooseneck up with those two bars with my headrest. And if it's center in there, again, I know I'm center with the, the truck and the trailer itself. Oh. So there's a bunch of, I mean, everybody's kind of got their own way to do it. Um, but those are kind of some little things that I've seen. Sure. Those are all cool. And I think you made a great point about going slow. Yeah. 
doesn't matter even if you're back into a spot or whatever yes. you do everything slowly because you, you can turn your wheel and then you, you really got to wait for the trader to move yes. before you start making other maneuvers yep. so a lot of people do that they just start turning and going back and forth by the time a trader reacts it's going the wrong way that they thought they were Correct. going so now i like that idea yeah that's cool can you put a piece of that orange tape on your toolbox that comes down the middle yeah you can you can do a line uh on on the toolbox you know it always it's a little bit tougher because it's you know that diamond plate with the oh, with the tread so yeah. you know getting that tape to stick but i've seen i've seen people put a piece of tape on their back window oh yeah if it's square in there and again lining that with up with the coupler itself as they're backing yeah. up again you have to be square in your seat and not yeah. really moving but that's another little trick yeah and these crew cabs you're a little further away from the window than the old days when i was driving single cabs yeah. which always cool they have visual raids well let's hook this puppy up okay. So one of the first things that, that we do is, and, and a rule when I grew up was, hey, whoever is hooking up the trailer, just leave it to one person. Because we all get in a rush, we all get talking, we all get maybe distracted to where I think Kent's up there hooking up chains and hooking up the coupler, and he thinks I'm back here running the leg up and cranking the trailer down, and we just don't wanna miss anything. So usually, I kinda go in reverse order on how I unhook the trailer with how I go ahead and hook it up. So the very first thing is obviously we gotta crank it down onto the truck. Yeah. So on this trailer here with this Cimarron, now this is a manual jack. I can actually remove this. This doubles as a lug wrench, a nice little oh, thing that, that cool. Cimarron gives us. And there's another thing that I really like about these Cimarrons is the 8-2 nose. They're a little bit longer. So with this being a long box, I still have room that I can get behind the tailgate and the trailer. A lot of times, other manufacturers, this tailgate will be right up against the, the spare tire. But I always go ahead and I put the handle away. And then I put my jack up. Now on this one, this one's spring loaded. So I put my foot on it because there's nothing worse than releasing that, nothing shooting up and a loud ping underneath this gooseneck. It just echoes and it hurts your ears. So I put that away and then I start working towards the, the, the truck itself. This one actually has an in-bed plug. So again, one of those seven pins, just like on the bumper pole. Can this one's actually the correct way it's not upside down. i know i love it i don't know why they put that that's how they were for 20 years <laughs> exactly. but somebody got goofy yeah. in engineering so again we want to make sure it's snug and then that the actual you know cover goes over that lip like we want and then from there i go ahead and i hook up the actual gooseneck coupler i hook up my chain I'm gonna get rid of that battery disconnect here for one second as far as the breakaway. I'm gonna get my other chain hooked and then I'm gonna hook it in there. Now sometimes you might have to get a little different carabiner. A little bit bigger carabiner on this one would work best yeah. to get it to actually snap onto that. Um, and that's that fast way cable you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, this one, oh, I really like cable. these because, boy, yeah. they get kind of out of the way. And then when you go to unhook it, you know, it's just not something else I got to worry about coiling up and hanging somewhere. Yeah, I've seen them on RV boxes, uh, that big, long bunch of cable that comes yeah. with these trailers. Hook on that and it locks up your brakes and you wonder what in the world's going on. Yeah. Now, you don't cross your chains on a gooseneck, right? I don't. I never have. I don't I've, think anybody does. Or that no. probably would be a dangerous thing. Exactly. If, yeah. And the one thing that we, and I'm sure you can elaborate on this a little bit more with these new puck systems in these trucks, you know, we're seeing where we hook our safety chains farther back. Yeah. And to be honest with you, it, that's another thing we got to worry about this chain length. Again, we want some slack there. We don't want them too tight because when we turn, again, we're creating... Yeah, that you, tension on those chains and that's not yeah, what we want right so that's one thing that i've noticed is some people have come in with newer trucks with those puck systems yeah and the other thing too is the actual snaps uh that that actually connect because they're a little bit bulkier 
there's kind of a sweet spot, or we might have to change those out for a bigger hook itself yeah, that's true. in I've order had to, to fit that. on those puck systems. Yeah, I've had to put bigger hooks on some of those. Well, that's the thing. I wish manufacturers, and you have an inside voice with that, would put longer chains on the gooseneck, longer chains on the bumper poles. We okay. need those longer chains because things are changing. And a lot of people use an adjustable hitch on the back, yeah. and then they're longer again. Yep. And absolutely. you know, just like you talked about the puck system, we need longer chains. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So are we ready to go rock and roll? We're ready to go down the road. <clears throat> hmm. Oh, you're going to make it easy. I'm trying to make it hard for you. Well, Before the best thing you. to do is, is try to make it as easy on yourself oh. as possible. Okay. Well, then back up. That saves where sanity in marriages. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we'll back it up a little, kind of where you made that little last dip, okay. and I'll explain it to you how you're trying to save your marriage. <laughs> I always have to do everything the difficult way so I can show them what the extreme is. That's why we tow so much stuff up in the mountains. Oh. <laughs> and you know, I really like goosenecks. I think they're easier to back up. But a lot of the secret is the longer the trailer, the easier it is to back up. The, Get that pivot point way back there. Exactly. And I, I would much rather, I mean, me personally, I'd rather back up a gooseneck than a bumper pull, and I'd much rather pull a gooseneck than a bumper pull. Oh, I know. I know. Every, everything's better. Everything, you know, the pivot point is slower. Yeah. I, yeah. I was so grateful back in uh, high school when I got my first gooseneck. It was just so wonderful. Yeah. So we're going to show a maneuver of backing this up, and let's see what you do. Okay. I'm sure you have some more secrets for us. One of the very first things is, is just make it easy on yourself, if you can. Not every instance is that case. Sometimes we have to literally back into at a 90 degree, um, so those are a little bit more difficult. If you can, get yourself as good of a straight shot as you can. If that means pulling an extra 30, 40 feet ahead to get you a straight shot and kind of pointing the the butt end of the trailer and kind of where you're wanting to go. That, right. If you start off that way, it's going to start, you know, and go much smoother for you. Um, the other thing is, if you do have a spotter, I need to be able to see the spotter. The spotter, <laughs> need, the spotter needs to be able to see me. That was our, if I can see you in the mirror or if they can't see me, you know, we're, we're not helping each other. Right. Um, having multiple spotters isn't a good thing. Yeah, it's confusing. Yes, because okay. everyone's kind of pointing this direction and that's this direction. That's true. And, that's true. And, and it, signals get goofy too. People yes. don't know, you know, if that means stop or what. Yeah. So it's good to do the get them get everybody knows on yeah. the same page of what the mm -hmm. signals mean. And again, if, if you can, I mean, kind of looking at where you're going, going a little bit farther if you need to, giving yourself a better straight shot to begin with. Again, it'll save your sanity, marriage, and friendships. Well, that's a good thing. That's always important, you know. But, you know, that's what I've seen, too. Even if you are having to jackknife, if you pull past the hole a ways yep. so you can get the tail end pointed closer to your first obstacle, then you can kind of guess where the other obstacle is. Exactly. So this is cool. So instead of jackknifing it, we're going to pull off kind of as straight as you can. So backing up is going to be easy. Yeah. Now, backing up, you know, I, I've been backing up for 43 years, traders, you know, since time began. And uh, so I'm always used to grabbing top of the steering wheel, and I, go, I use the steering wheel to go the opposite way the trader's going. Mm -hmm. The new thing, and I'm going to show it on the, my truck, it has that Trader Backup Pro, and it's a little knob you turn, and you turn it the opposite way what I'm used to. Yeah. But you actually turn the knob the same direction the trader's going, which kind of makes sense. The big thing out there I see with a lot of people, especially RVers are doing, is instead of steering it like you normally would steer forward, they go grab the bottom of the steering wheel. Well, I naturally cannot do much yeah. with the bottom of the steering wheel, but people are doing that, and I understand the why, because that's just like the knob on the Ford and the Rams, it points the same direction as the trailer. So if you're new to that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with using new, new ideas. No, absolutely, and, and, and that's not the way I was taught, so when I try to do that, it throws me off. I know. Again, it's it, kind it's... of whatever's comfortable, <laughs> and again, we go back to that old slower's better yeah. in these type of scenarios. That's true. It's very true. And so, you know, we want to be safe. We want to be confident. And so it, it's not a big chore backing up a trailer. Yeah. And I don't know why, but one of the other tips that I do is, is I roll down my windows. Oh, yeah. So I mean, I, I have tinted windows in my truck. Yeah. But I want as, as best and clear shot as I can. And every once in a while, if I need to lean out the window and kind of yeah. shoot out there a little bit, I can. Yeah. Um, you know, I try to just strictly stick with my mirrors. But if I have to, I can lean out and, well, if you're and, and look down the track. That's true. And if your radio is off and your your windows are down, you can hear what you're hitting. <laughs> well, other than yes. that, but, but you know, another thing with these are, is like where you're at, 
backing toward your left, toward the driver's side. Yeah. Then you got your window you can look at, you got the mirror. If you're backing the other way, all you got is the mirror, and yeah. sometimes a little bit of view out the back window, but not much. So yeah. this is the ideal way if you can. Not all places will allow you to yes. back the way you want. Yeah. So let's see if you can hit that hole. Okay, let's give it a shot. I've always been the type that I always keep my foot on the brake. Um, I just, you know, I have enough pressure that if I need to stop, I can right away. Uh, but that's just something that I've always just been more comfortable with in doing, is just kind of keeping a little bit of pressure on the brake and just easing it back there. Again, slower is better in my opinion. That's a good idea, and that's much quicker than jumping your foot off and running, moving it over. Exactly. That takes time too. Yeah. Now the backup camera doesn't do a whole lot of good when there's a gooseneck on if you don't have the, the um, camera up on top of the cab. But Correct. I wanted to show your foot, because that's where it is. Your foot is on the brake yep. as you back up. I certainly like that idea, because especially if it's on the gas, you're in big trouble. But even if it's on the floor, going from the floor to the brake pedal takes some time. Yep. And that's a safe way of doing it. I really appreciate that. Yeah, and there is one thing that I do on my truck with this backup camera, I mean, because I've got the one on my tailgate, but I don't have the one in the, you know, above the cab. But at home, where I park my trailer, I have a block that I put my foot on of the jack. Oh yeah. And as I'm going back, and oh, I yeah. I can start to see exactly where that's at, and it's kind of there's another trick that I'll show you that I do too at home, but I always like to put it on that that board and i can see where that board is and where i want oh, to be oh that's awesome yeah I, I, I stop the trailer that's good i live in the sand hills i have to use boards or the trailer would sink out yep. of sight so, i'm yeah. the same boat <laughs> well that's cool let's go back and look at that yeah yeah so i was kind of mentioning to you that i like to put that block and i run a two yeah. by six and you know it's about 18 inches long and one of the other things that we tell people is is whenever you're blocking these trailers most of the time people want to block it this way across the trailer well, if this trailer's going to move one way or the other, Kent, which way is it going to go? I guess the tires have something to do with that. It's going to need to go forward <laughs> or backwards, so you're better yeah. to run that board lengthwise. Yeah. So again, I kind of have my board already set, and again, I'll look at it in my in the camera as I'm backing up. But I also have a, a 4x4 block that's a little bit longer. It's about two foot long, uh -huh. and that's where I want my back tire to be. Oh. So when I hit that, I know I'm two foot off my fence. Yeah. Again, we want to yeah. listen if we're hitting anything. I know when I hit that, I'm usually right over where I want to be with that block. And the reason why I make it two foot is, is I always try to aim to have a foot off of well, so you can see the it. tire so I can see yeah, it. Yeah, that's great. It, it, that's... I just got a place where I park it at home and that's just made it so simple. Well, this is the gooseneck we just backed in here. So I want CJ to tell you all about it. Yeah, so this here is a Cimarron. We feel it's the best built trailer on the market today. And if we walk you through the specs and how this trailer is constructed, standard options, options we add to these trailers, we'll, we're very confident when it's all said and done, you'll agree with us. But all aluminum construction, uh, best floor in the market, four inch centers. They really stand behind their product. Eight year structure warranty, three year nose to tail hardware, one year no questions asked warranty on the tires. Even if you hit road debris, hit a nail that can't be patched, they'll send you a new tire within a couple days. Uh, insulated roof standard on every single one of these Cimarron's. Again, extremely well-built trailers. Uh, this trailer right here is a three horse. This is a front dressing room with a closet tack setup, so you get kind of a separate tack room. So we're not getting that front dressing room near as dirty. Uh, and again, you're not having to smell saddles and tack in this setup here. Cool trailer. Hey, I've got questions about spotter mirrors. Let's go up here by this mirror. <clears throat> See if I can get in trouble. Oh, I didn't break off. <laughs> you know, I, I'm big on Trader Toy mirrors. Anytime I get in a vehicle and it has a little print that says, objects may appear smaller than they are, I take that mirror off and I throw it away. Oh, it irritates me. I mean, you don't see those on semis. When you're pulling traders, you can't have one side look different than the other. They've got to be parallel. So I always take mine off. And then, you know, I like the big spotter mirror so you can see. I like to watch my trader tires as I go around corners. Yeah. I like to see if they're flat. I like to see if they're hitting somebody. <clears throat> and that's all good. But this is Trader Toy Mirror, so you got the same mirror on each side. And then it's so good. I mean, that, that helps every situation with backing up is having the same one. But I do that. If I have a vehicle and it has that wrong mirror, I take it off and I would buy another one. 
because that just irritates the heck out of me. Okay, here's a manual brake controller. This is what you grab. You grab that and you swing that one over and that's what makes the magic. That gives you your trailer brakes by themselves. This is like a, an override. And your foot brake normally will brake both, the truck and the trailer. This, if you're swaying, you need to straighten out the trailer. You're on ice. Somebody's pushing around the road. You want to use that, not the foot brake. And here's your gain. So you've got plus and minus. And plus gives you more pressure on your brakes. Let me show you in the dash what this looks like. Okay, that's, there is your, shows your, what your brake controller is doing. It's a six and a half gain, six and a half out of ten. So I'm pushing that so it goes all the way over. And that's just using the manual control. That's what that is. That is nice. So to finish up this trailer review, I want to talk about the Trader Backup Assist. This is from Ford. It's called Trader Backup Assist, and it's that knob. And you twist that knob, and it'll steer your truck in reverse, and that knob goes the same direction as your trailer. So it goes the same direction as the bottom of your steering wheel, which is a big new thing what everybody's doing. They want to steer at the bottom. Me, I'm still used to sticking with the top of the steering wheel. So I have to go, you know, I've been backing up reverse that way a long time, so I'm used to being up here. But if you want to do it down here, that's fine. So now I've got this set up. I'm going to push this button. I push that and you see it light up. So that's the trader backup knob. And then I go over here and you can see on my dash, if I hit OK, then it goes locating the sticker. And that's what it's doing here. It's lo that's the back camera. It's locating the sticker on my hitch. So it found it. So we're doing good. So now let's see what else we can get done. Try out this backup assist. Now Ram also came out with this this year. Theirs is called the Trainer Reverse Steering Control. And even the TRX has it. It's uh, just in their 1500. The Ford does have this new the backup assist on their Super Duties now, which is cool. And this with a gooseneck. I got to try that out. But this is the two systems that will steer for you, and it's just nothing but the knob and your brake, and it'll move the trailer around. But I've got the backup system on, and so I've got it in reverse. So I will turn this knob, and you will see the steering wheel move too. So hopefully you can see the steering wheel and the knob, and once in a while look out the mirror, see where the trailer's going. Okay, I want to go to that. Yep. It's going that way. I want to go this way. It's going that way. Look at that steering wheel. Crazy steering wheel. It is so cool. Where's those rocks? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. That is so cool. I'm not touching the steering wheel. All I was doing is playing with that knob. And that really makes that steering wheel go nuts. And that's what you do. Slowly you do that and that knob steers the truck. And it steers it the same direction the back of the trailer is going. So for a lot of new people, that's going to be important. That will help. For us old farts, it's, we're too far gone. We can't, <laughs> 43 years of towing, I can't change habits. But it, I understand the need for it, and I understand how it's going to help people. So I think it's awesome. And right now, it's the Ford and the Ram that have them, this backup assist system. These backup systems are, are, are cool. I understand them. Now, on the Ford, you have these checkerboard stickers, and I'll show you that that you put on the hitch and you measure it out seven to 22 inches on the hitch and then you measure from the camera down to the center of that sticker you measure from the hitch to the center of the sticker and you measure from the back of the truck to the middle of the trailer tire that axles i know that sounds like that's four measurements but you only do that once and to each trailer you use and then you're done and i'm not sure the ram ones i've got to go play with but they don't have any stickers so i don't think a different radar kind of thing but you know it's done mostly with cameras but uh, that'd be interesting to find out. I'll try to get a hold of one of those so you can see that. 